so good afternoon guys um i'm having this short video to help us understand what we started off that is the double integrals under the multiple integrals so the first sub outline was the double integrals And under this, I told you guys that we'll have two main objectives. That is finding the double integral under rectangular surfaces or regions. And the non-rectangular regions. And I realized that it was more pleasant and easier computing the double integrals over rectangular regions because of the Fibonacci theorem where we can easily interchange the limits of integration. So for rectangular regions, we have the domain defined as r equal to then your two variables a less or equal to x less or equal to b and then I'll have my c less than y less or equal to d. This is my rectangular domain. And this can simply be written as a, b, cross of c, d. So either your rectangular domain is given in this form or it's given in that form. You can still integrate your function. So a, b, C, D of any given function since we have C, D here it means that is my Y my inner integral is the Y domain and my outer integral is the X we said this is equivalent to interchanging the limit as C, D A, B F of X, Y now it becomes the X, the Y we can always do this with a rectangular domain. And we looked at certain examples in class. Now my focus here is to take us through the non-rectangular domain one more time, since it was a challenge. So taking... So taking the re general regions now, let's look at the general regions now. This is the same as the non-rectangular regions. How do we compute such regions? So I'll take the first example but then we also know that for general regions we expect that our outer integral would always be constant and then our inner integral can take the variable limit outer integral is taking the constant inner integral taking the variable any of them would go so let's take the first example So let me let me just go by this now for general regions we have two ways of evaluating our um, variables so we have the first type that is i want to slice through slice through the y direction or the y axis and i can also slice through the x direction if you are slicing through the y direction we will have it that our coordinates on the x will be constant we will have constant x coordinates or x limits 
and then it's slicing through the x direction we'll have our y limits to be constant so how do we do this let me take the first one Slicing through the y direction. In slicing through the right direction, because we said we'll have the constants being on the x limit, it means that our domain here is written as x y such that my limits on the x axis are constant and then the y limits will take a function respect to the x in the x direction we said that the constant will be on the y Limit. It means that the domain is always written as C less than Y less than equal to D. And then I have H1 of Y less than X less than H2 of Y. We are on the general regions. To find the limit of integration for general regions, it is important to know the limit of your integration. The limit of our integrations here. How do I know the right limit of my integration since it's not a rectangular domain? And I said that we have two ways of looking at the integration. Either we are slicing, we are slicing through the y direction which implies that our limit on the x will be constant. And if you are slicing through the x direction, the y limit becomes constant. And there's a way to write them. So in the y direction, the x limits are constant. And the y takes the functions of x that is a variable. In the x direction, the, function, the limit on the y takes the constant. And then the x limit takes the variable in terms of y. These are the two ways to get a limit of integration. Having said that, now let me take the first example. I have a function f of x, y is equal to s square y. It says it is defined on the triangular vertices. Defined on 0, 0, 2, 0, and then 2, 3. We want to evaluate the double integral over the domain d of our f of x, y, d, a. Now, this is not a rectangular domain. If I should plot this as is, 0, 0 is here, 2, 0 is here, and then 2, 3. So 2, 3 is here. If I trace this point, sorry. If I trace this point, I have a triangular domain. It is not a rectangular domain. Hence, it's a general domain. Since the vertices gives me a triangular domain, I can't use the idea of rectangular domain to evaluate this integral. 
So how do I get the limit? First, you have to know the equations of the line. At this line, the equation becomes y equal to zero. On this line, the equation of the line here is x is equal to two. Now we need to know the equation of the hypotenuse here. How do we do that? We know the point here is two, three. The point is zero, zero. Finding the equation of a line. We have it as y minus y1 is equal to mx plus c. Sorry. mx minus x1. So let's see if we can find the equation of this line. So I have y equal to y minus 0, the first point, is equal to m is the gradient. Now to find m, we know it's the change in y over the change in x. This is the same as 0 minus 3. Change in y respect to change in it. So 3 minus 0 over 2 minus 0, which is 3 on 2. So we have two, 3 on 2 here, x minus x1, which is still 0. It means the equation at that point, or equation of the line there is this. So this is y is equal to 3 on 2 x. That is the equation of our line. Now, where do we slice or where do we cut through? Are we cutting through the x axis or we are cutting through the y axis or the y direction? Let me take the first one. If I want to slice along the y axis, I have this as my domain. It means I'm slicing through it this way. Where I have y equal to zero here, x is equal to two, and y is equal to three over two x. It means that I expect my x coordinates to be constant because I'm slicing through the y axis and then my y limit will take the variable so you realize that we move from y equal to zero to the upper bound so y is equal to zero here y is equal to three over two x my inner limit is y then my outer limit is x now how do I get the limit of x now it's constant, you look at the range of x. x moves from 0 to the point 2. So 0 and then upper bound 2 of your function. This is what you get to evaluate. Don't forget that your f of x is s squared over 2. Then you evaluate as your normal double integration. Now if I want to slice through the x axis, The same graph, 2 here, 0 here, y equal to 0, x equal to 2, and I have y equal to 3 over 2x. Slicing through the x axis, it means this way. We are cutting or slicing through in the x direction. So I know that in the x direction, 
my y is constant and then my x will take the variable it means my inner function or inner integral is dx and my outer is dy now x moves from this line and ends here so it means the upper is 2 the first one the first point we have it as y is equal to 3 over 2x it implies that x is equal to 2 over 3y so we are moving from this point so it means x is 2 or y over 3 here we move from the first point here we have to find the change in subject respect to x and this is what we get and it ends at this line which is x equal to 2 now what how do i determine the limit of my y the limit of y is here it starts from 0 and it ends as it ends at 3 don't forget it was 3 here we add our function we expect that any of the integration you use you should get the same answer which I have not done I'm just trying to let you know how to get the limits of your integration for general functions so this is one example whether you slice through the y axis it touches from here to up the x axis from here to the other boundary it means your x your y coordinates will be constant and then your inner will take the variable anyway you evaluate this integral so you should get the same answer that is the first example in doing that the solution is 36 over 5 if you should evaluate the function x square y it's 36 over 5 for both. Let's take the second example. The second example, um, I have a double integral of 4 minus x minus 2y dA it says where d is where d is a triangular region defined on its vertices 0 0 4 0 and then 0 2 so I plot this point 0 0 4 0 and then two zero two so zero two this point in tracing it i have this that and then that again this is a triangular domain it means that you must always plot your general region to see how your domain looks like Again, I have to find the equation of these lines. You realize that on this horizontal line, my y is 0. On this vertical line, my x is equal to 2. Sorry, x is equal to 0. now we are left to find the equation of the hypotenuse again the point here is 2 0 and the point here is 4 0 so the equation of the line y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1 when my m is equal to change in y over change in x this is equal to 0 minus 2 over 4 minus 0. Negative 2 over 4. So we have negative half.
which is expected because we have x declining. It's a negative slope. So I have y minus y1, which is 0, is equal to negative 1 on 2x minus x1, 0. So we are looking at the point 0 to 2 to 4, 0. It means the equation of the line is y is equal to um, y1 is not 0. So y1 is rather 2 and then x1 is rather 0. So we have y is equal to negative half x plus 2, which is the same as having as y minus x on 2. So the equation of the line here is y is equal to 2 minus x on 2. That is the equation of the line at that point. We have our vertices, we have our lines. How do we get the limit of our integration? So the first step, I can slice through the y axis or the y direction. And doing that, I have my triangle as that 4, 0, x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2 minus x on 2, y is equal to 0. I'm sliding through the x axis from down through to up, from down through to the upper bound. Since we are slicing through the y axis, I expect my x coordinate to be constant, but then I'll have the variables for the y. My inner integral is y, my outer is x. You realize that x, y starts from the point zero and it ends at the upper bound here, 2 minus x on 2. And what will be the coordinate for x? It's supposed to be constant. And then on the x axis, we have 0 to 4. 0 to 4. Of your function. What about the function? That is this one. You evaluate it. That is the limit of your integration. The same way someone can also slice through the x direction. If I'm slicing through the x direction, my graph doesn't change. It's still the same thing. So y is equal to 0 here. I have 0 to 4. And the point here was 2. x equal to 0, y is equal to 2 minus x on 2. Now we are moving in the x direction, so from one point here to this point, from this point to that point, from this boundary to the upper boundary here. Let me write it. Oh. So from one boundary to the other one. So the line starts from this one and ends and touches the upper bound here. That is in the y direction, sorry, x direction. You know you expect your y points to be constant and then the x to be some variables. So x is starting at the line zero. x is starting at this line, x equals to 0, and it's touching this line, the hypotenuse. But we have to find the equivalence in terms of x. We had y equal to 2 minus x on 2. It implies that x is equal to 2 minus y, 2 minus y, 
all times two. If you do your change of subject word, this is what you have. V is equal to four minus two y. So that's four minus two y of my function. Don't forget this is the x integral. And the outer is y. It's supposed to be constant. So we check what is the domain for the y. It starts from zero and it ends at two. Zero to two. These are your two different integrations. Either you take the y direction, you have this to integrate. Or you take the x direction, have this to integrate, and you must get the same answer. So that is example two. Now example three. Example three. I have a region R. It says that it is bounded by the graphs bounded by y is equal to x is also bounded by x is equal to zero bounded by y equal to three and we want to evaluate the integral 2xy squared plus 2y cos x dA we don't know what the limits of integrations are. We are just giving the boundaries of the region. It is not given as rectangular domain. So we need to know the boundary or the region we are dealing with. Let's plot our graphs here. Always plot your graph. If I want to plot x is equal to zero, x is equal to zero is on this point. This is x is equal to zero y is equal to 3 is a horizontal line the last one is y is equal to root x if you want to plot the graph of y is equal to root x it's not going to be a straight line it's going to be a curve you can also take this as s equal to y squared and then see how you can plot it it means every point of x will be the square of y. Every point of x will be a square of y. And this will be a curve. And this is the curve y equals to root x. This is our domain. But we need to know the point of intersection here. How do I find that? Because these two curves are intersecting, it means that 3 is equal to root x. That is the point of intersection where they meet. And each, I just need to find x. It means I have to square both sides. Hence, x is equal to 9. It means the point here is 9. For the vertices, the points were already given. But in terms of the graphs, we need to find the point of intersection. And that is 9. Now the next thing is to find our limit of integration. Let's take the first one. If I want to slide through the y direction. So I still have my graph. Here is 9, 0. The line here is y equal to 3. The line here is y is equal to root x. So the curve here is y is equal to root x. And then the line here is x equal to 0. I'm sliding through the y direction. So from the bottom here to up. I'm not getting a straight line, but from the bottom here up, from the lower domain to the upper domain, this is my y direction. In y direction, 
x limit is constant but then the y's are variable since it's y equal to i know there's going to be y dx y starts at root x that is the lower boundary and it ends at y equal to 3 as simple as that now what becomes the point on my x the x is supposed to be a constant it starts from 0 and then it ends at 9 9 was the point of intersection of the given function where your f of x y is that so that's how you evaluate it my interest here is to know or to help you get the limit of integration for the double integration you can all do that but to get to know sorry for the computations you cannot do that but get to know how to find the limit of integration so this is the limit of integration in the y direction the same way someone can take it <coughs> in the x direction so i still have my So the choice is yours. You know the point of intersection had nine. Okay. Your line here is still y equal to root x. Y equal to three here. X is equal to zero. Nothing has changed. It's just how we are cutting through the domain. Okay. So for this x direction i'm starting from one end to the other end here from this end to the upper end here. x direction means the y is constant because i have x verb so i know this is going to be the x dy now x starts at the line x equal to zero and it ends at the line y equal to root x as I showed in the previous examples, you have to find the equivalence of x. I had the upper bound is y equal to root x. It means that x is equal to squaring both sides to so y squared. The integration on the x-axis must be constant and is bounded by 0 to 3. It's bounded by 0 to 3 of your function. This is the other limit of integration. And in solving this function, you are supposed to get 314.3, approximately. Once again, know which direction you are slicing through and know how to get the limit of integration. This is for general regions. So for this example, this is my limit of integration in any of the directions which you are comfortable with. Okay. Let's take the last example. That's example four. I want to evaluate a double integral where the limits are given. I want to evaluate this. Now we've gone through how to look at rectangular domains and the non-rectangular domains. The question is, in case these statements are not made, saying it is triangular, it is rectangular, it is circle and all that, how would you know that the function you are trying to evaluate falls under any of these two groups so that you get to know what to do well someone can say we have the limit here so since we have a variable in the limit you get to know it is not a rectangular domain because rectangular domains have all their limits to be constant since we have a variable there the first thing to prompt you that it is not a rectangular domain it is non-rectangular and you can simply evaluate this. If you want to integrate this one, 
realize that I have to first integrate respect to x. And now do you integrate? How do you integrate exponential of x squared? It's not possible. We, don't, we, we are not able to find or we don't really know the antiderivative of x squared. So over here, what you can do is to switch the order of integration. You want to switch the order of integration because the antiderivative of this or the integration of E exponential, sorry, exponential x squared is unknown. Because it's unknown, you want to switch the limit of integration. I hope that is clear. Because the antiderivative of this function is unknown, it means you can integrate respect to x. But then assuming you want to integrate this respect to y, you can simply say this is y e x squared over the limit you have. That is easier to do. Therefore, we want to switch this one as e x squared. Now it changes to dy dx. So in place of the x dy, we want to have it as dy dx so that we have to first integrate it. Let me rewrite this one. So now we want to have it in this way. 0 to 1. We want to have it as some integral of under integral s squared dy. Because if it's of this form, I can easily have this as my computation. So how do we switch the order of integration? You first have to plot your domain. Plot your domain. We have it as 0, less than x, less than 1. That is for, you know, from this preamble, we have it that our x runs from 1 to y, and our y runs from 0 to 1. So this one here, so you have to plot it. In plotting this, this is the same as y is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. This is also the same as x equal to 1, x equal to y. So let's plot these graphs. y is equal to 0 is this line. y is equal to 1 will be a horizontal line like this. x equal to 1 will be a vertical line. So we just use 1. Then the last one is x equal to y. x equal to y will be a straight line. So what, where is our boundary or which side of the triangle is our domain? We will have to take where all the lines meet. So we have y equal to 0, y is equal to 1 here x is equal to 1 here, and then y is equal to x here. This is x equal to y. Remember there's an open space here, means this is the domain. Because there's no line meeting this point, it refuses to be a domain, and our domain becomes the lower part of a triangle. So let's do our slicing. If I want to slice through this domain in the y direction, let's see our limits of integration. I have my lower triangular y equal to 0, x equal to 1. Yes, 1, 0. Um, this trace to 1. 
this is x equal to y that's all all right i'm tracing or slicing through the y direction so from down to up here it starts from this line and then move to touch the other line y direction my x coordinates supposed to be constant and i have to get variable in the x if so in the y direction so you realize that y is starting from the line it's starting from this point which is y equals to zero and it ends on the hypotenuse since it is x equals to y means simply y is also is equal to x and then the x will take the constant the constant is zero through to one of the your e x squared so we've had this this is what we expect to have then i can simply integrate this it means that the original function the original equation was given in the x direction and let's see that if i slice through the x direction i still have my lower domain it's still y equals to 0, 1 here, 0 here. This is traced to 3. x equal to y. x equal to 1. And I'm cutting it this way. I start from this hypotenuse and ends at the adjacent. In the x direction, I expect that my y axis will be constant. So here's the x, the y x is starting from the line x equal to y and it ends on the line x equal to 1. Now the domain for the y, sorry, the limit for the y will start from 0 to 3. So 0 to 3 of my e. Um, oh, sorry, 1. It's traced to 1. So it becomes 0 to 1. Of e x squared. So I was saying that the original equation, this, was in the x direction. And the change of switching the order of integration means we now want to take it in the y direction to have a suitable limit of integration. And this will be easier to evaluate than this because we don't know the integration of e x respect to x. So the original was in the x direction. And now this is the switching in the x, sorry, in the y direction. And let's see how we can evaluate this e. So it means I have to integrate 0 to 1 y e x squared 0 to x dx, which is equal to integral 0 to 1 if i do a substitution i have x e x squared dx now to use integration by substitution and not integration by part integration by substitution by substitution then i have u to be my x I'm setting u to be x squared. It means that the u is equal to 2x dx. And you realize that half the u is equal to x dx. So by substitution, I have 0 to 1. Half e u du. Because x dx is the same as this x dx here is the same as half du eu integration of this is the same as half integral 0 to 1 eu du integrating of exponential function is the same thing so i have half e to the power u 0 to 1 is equal to half 
e to the power 1 minus e to the power 0. This is half e minus 1 as your final solution. So this is the end of um, the presentation. Oh, let me see the lecture. Yeah. Evaluating general regions using the slicing of either through the x axis or through the y axis. So I hope you get through what I have and then we'll continue the discussion in class when we meet for any clarifications. Thank you very much.